Father of kindness, you have poured out grace. You brought me out of darkness, you have filled me with your peace. Give a mercy or my help in time of need. Lord, I I can't help but sing, sing faithful. Come on. Faithful, you are always Lord. All your promises are yes and amen. All your promises, all your promises are yes and amen. Yeah, every one of them. Beautiful Savior, sing this out. Beautiful Savior, you have brought me near. You pulled me from the ashes, you have broken every curse. My blessed Redeemer, you have said, is happy for you. But I, I can't help to sing your favor. My confidence. Well, good morning. Here's your faithfulness. I will rest. See you guys this morning. It's always good to be in church. And all your promises. My confidence. Your class. That would be very good. So here's your faithfulness. Sing it up. I will rest. That's all. In your promises. My confidence. Oh, one more time. And I will rest in your promises. My confidence, Jesus, is your faithfulness. Promises of God that are yay and amen. And today I want you to just enter in today, leave all your cares at the door. Let's rest in God, slip on over into the 
inner court. You know, you might be in the outer court, but it's time to come on into the inner court and press into God and receive what he's got for you. The glory of God is here today. So receive his glory today. Amen. Come on, let's worship him. Glory. Uh, don't forget, mark your calendar. We have Dave DeMarco coming. It's a Christmas concert. It's a good opportunity. It's called uh, Believe, where all things are possible with God. That's on the 26th at 10 a.m. And, and it's a family concert, so invite some friends and come out and enjoy the presence of God, and Dave will be a, it'll be a blessing. Don't forget all the praise and worship. Little kids go out uh, right after praise and worship. And we have a security meeting today also in the sanctuary, so appreciate those guys involved that would do that too, and we appreciate that. I want to mention also if you're filling out a check or you're giving money or anything, make sure you write your name clearly and your, your check, and so we know the amount and and the account number, that would be very appreciative. We appreciate that. And so we can read it. That's really good. Thank you. It's really, we, we appreciate that. Oh, man. Yeah, let's pray. Let's all stand up and bless God. Father, we're so thankful to be in your presence. We're thankful, Father, that you love us. Thank you, Lord, that you give us strength because we're your children. You give us peace because we're your children. We bless you. And we thank you for a good time this morning. And we welcome them in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, God, we just want to come and give you thanks. We count on one thing, that you're the same God who never fails. I count on one thing, the same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God is never late, is working all things out. You're working all things out. And yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy. When my heart is heavy all my days, yes, I will. Yeah. Let's sing that again. We count on you, God. You're the same God. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. But the same God is never late, is working all things out. You're working all things out. And yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. The name of all names, and nothing can stand against an ashes to praise. To glorify, glorify the name of all names, and nothing can stand against. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. heavy all my days, and yes, I will, for all my days, and yes, I will, for all my days, and yes, I will. 
Yes, God. We choose to praise, to glorify. So, God, we, we've come into this house to magnify your name, to exalt your name. Say it with me. He is worthy, he is worthy. of my praise. Can you say something? Well, we thank, amen, hallelujah. We thank God for his steadfast love that endures forever. That's what it says in Second Chronicles 20, verse 21. So that's what we're going to do today. Thank him for all the blessings. You know, it's a good day to count your blessings. We're all breathing, right? <laughs> okay. So we've got a lot to be thankful for. Jesus is good. Father, we bless you today and thank you for every person that's watching today, Father, that their needs will be met that they'll come to know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Father, we thank you right now for touching them supernaturally, Father, with your love. And, Father, meet every need. If there's healing, if there's a miracle that's needed, Father, we ask that, th that every person will receive today before they leave this house. Father, we've come expecting. We believe you for miracles because, Jesus, you are the same yesterday and today and forever. Hallelujah. Let's praise him. You are faithful, God. We are holding on. And I am holding on to faith. Because I know you make a way. And I don't always understand. And I don't always get to see. I will believe it. And I will believe it. You make mountains move, you make giants fall, you use songs of praise to shake prison walls, and I will speak to my fear, and I will preach to my doubt that you were faithful then, you'll be faithful now. We are standing on your word. I am standing on your word. You're calling heaven down to earth. You will fight my enemies. And this will end in victory. And I will believe it. And I will believe. Let's sing it out. You make mountains move, yes you do You make giants fall You use songs of praise To shake prison walls And I will speak to my fear And I will preach to my doubt That you were faithful then You'll be faithful You are And you were faithful then You'll be faithful now And I know that I know You never fail Oh yes, I know that I know You never will Oh yes, I know that I know You never fail Yes, I know that I know You never will You make my make giants fall you use songs of praise to shake prison walls and i will speak to my fear and i will preach to my doubt that you were faithful then you'll be faithful now you make mountains move you make giants fall you use songs of praise you to take prison walls and I will speak to my fear and I will preach to my doubt that you were faithful then you'll be faithful now and you were faithful then you'll be faithful 
Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You make mountains move. You make giants fall in this place, Lord. Lord, restore the joy of our salvation this morning, Lord. Hallelujah, because joy is an action of faith, Lord. So, Lord, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ha ha. For being on our side and being for us. In the end, Lord, with you, we win. With you, Father, thank you. Jesus. Jesus. He's the holy and anointed one. Let's sing it this morning. And holy and anointed one. Let's sing that again. Jesus, we sing. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Risen and exalted one. Jesus. Your name. Jesus, I love you. I love your name. Your name is like honey. Let's worship the Lord. Oh, touch our lips this morning, God. Your spirit is like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp to my feet. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Jesus, I love you. I love you. I love you. Jesus, I love you. I love you. I love you. Jesus, I love you. on him today Jesus I love you I love you I love you Jesus I love you I love you we love you God Jesus I love you I love you I love you more than anything more than anything oh more than anything God more than anything more than anything more than anything let's declare from our hearts this morning you're number one more than anything more than anything Love you, God, more than anything. Thank you, Jesus. We put you first, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's a special anointing here today. Out of a thankful heart, it's easy to praise Him, isn't it? Our worship is birthed in a thankful heart, isn't it? When our hearts are grateful, oh, I'll tell you, it's easy to worship him. It's easy to praise him. You know, the Apostle Paul, concerning him, it says in Galatians chapter 1, verses, verse 23, I believe it is. 
It says, but they had heard only that he, talking about Paul, which persecuted us in times past, now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed. Isn't that something? Paul persecuted people in times past, but now he's preaching the faith which he once destroyed. Yeah. Glory to God. Is that transformation or what? That's God's grace, isn't it? And how, listen, he wants to do that with every single one of us. Transform our lives by his love. Turn us around and cause us to be victorious in Jesus. And then to lead some other people to Jesus. You know, this Christmas time is a great time, isn't it? To share tracts with people, your relatives, your friends, and Thanksgiving dinners. You know, it's a good idea to just ask, go around the table and say, okay, what are you thankful for? What are you most thankful for right now? And share Jesus and see if you can get him born again. Amen. And Christmas time, oh, it's a great time of year, isn't it? Lord, we thank you. I see, excuse me, let me, you know what? Is it okay if I pray for you? Would that be okay? Some of you guys, come on, get around here. We want to pray for this young lady right here in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you right now. So those of you who are in faith, anybody buddy that's in faith, come on, join us here. Father, we thank you for a miracle right now to touch my sister in Jesus' name. From the top of her head to the soles of her feet, Father. Thank you for your anointing. Killing every abnormal cell in Jesus' name and replacing it with wholesome cells, Father. Vibrant, alive, normal cells, Father. Uh -huh. Throughout her being, Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit presence. Show her how much you love her, Father. Give her the miracle that she needs. Oh, glory be to God. Thank you for it, Father. Whew, glory. Thank you, my Father. Wonderful Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. That's his presence. That's him pouring his love into you. His healing anointing. And every day, just simply say, get up and say, Father, thank you that that anointing is working in me 24-7 to effect a healing and a cure. Thank you, Jesus, I believe I received. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I can tell you, it works. I was diagnosed back in January. I had to have a prostate biopsy, and uh, it was high-grade, aggressive, number nine on the Gleason scale. And I can tell you today, Jesus has touched my life. Now, I've gone through some medical treatments, but my wife prayed for me. And when she did, I sensed the anointing when she prayed for me. And that's when I got it. And today, I just had a, a blood test the other day. And the PSA is 0 0.02, which means nothing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Isn't Jesus good? Woo! Anybody else need a miracle today? It's yours. Lift your hand to heaven and say, Father, thank you. I receive my miracle right now. For what things ever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You're a miracle working Jesus, and we thank you for it, Father. We give you all the glory. <laughs> glory to God. Come on. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Woo! He's faithful. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Reggie, come on over here. Let's pray for Reggie right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Guys, come on. Get around us here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I just sense the anointing, Reggie, just to pray for you. Father, thank you. Thank you for touching Reggie right now. Thank you, Father, for your anointing, your healing power flowing into Reggie right now, Father, to set right it, set it, whatever is wrong in there, Father. We thank you for taking care of it, Lord. Thank you that you also kill every abnormal cell and replace it with healthy, vibrant cells, Father, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, my Father. Brother Scott, come on down here a minute. This guy's going to speak for me today. Scott, I want you to lay hands on him too. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Father. Right there, right there, right in this area, right here. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you for the anointing. Whoa, glory to God. Woo, thank you, Father. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Fire Lord. of the Lord. Fire. Fire of the Lord. Fire of the Lord. Fire of the Lord. Hallelujah. Fire of the Lord burns out the chaff in Jesus' name. We rebuke the spirit of infirmity coming against our brother in the name of Jesus. It goes now. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, just say, I receive it. I receive it. Oh, you say, it's mine. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. He's so good. He loves us so much. Each one of you is so special to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my Father. Oh, let's sing that again, that chorus. Sing that chorus. Yeah, go ahead. Thank your way to healing. <laughs> Amen. Take the praise cure. Thanks. Thanks. I give you thanks for all you. We're so grateful, Lord. You are so good. And I am so blessed. My soul is some pain. You have some pain, Kathy? Come on up here, Kathy. Scott, come on that back down again. Hallelujah. But you just follow the Holy Spirit, don't you? You just wait and wait on Him and His love is here and His love is enveloping each one of us today, isn't it? Amen. Scott, go ahead and pray for us. Father, we are just in total agreement with our sister right now. We rebuke the spirit of infirmity in the mighty name of Jesus right now. Lord, remove the mountain in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you for removing the mountain right now, Lord. We're in agreement according to Matthew 18, 19. For where two of you on earth agree as touching anything, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. So we are in agreement in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for the healing, Lord. Go ahead, Bree. How do you feel right now? Well, I don't know yet. It's still there a little bit. from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Every need met and refreshing, not just this physical need, but a spiritual refreshing is coming to you now, Father. Thank you for your oil, for your oil. Holy Spirit, 
every nook and cranny, every crevice of her body being touched right now. We command this pain to go. It must bow. It must bow to the name of Jesus. We call on that name, the most holy name. We command this pain to leave right now in Jesus' name. It's gone. All right, now come on. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Anybody else in pain today? You are, right? Come on, all right, over here. Scott and Bree, pray for, pray for this young lady right here, too. Linda. for Linda right now and we agree as a church right now see sometimes fear can bring up things upon us Linda so we're going to rebuke that spirit of fear okay so we don't want to bring any entry point for the enemy to keep bugging you right so we rebuke first of all we rebuke the spirit of fear that's been coming up upon you and we're the and I'm just going to say what comes to my mind, all right? Right? So to my spirit, we, we just, we rebuke this abuse of the enemy. And the Lord says, I believe the Lord just showed me a vision here. He's going to keep you safe, Linda. All right? He's going to keep you safe. You don't have to worry. I saw like a security belt or something. Like, you're secure in him. You are secure. You don't have to worry. This fear goes and the Lord is going to lift the lid over your life and you're going to you're about to do some things you've never done before you've always always be afraid you've been afraid maybe to do in the past but the Lord is lifting the lid off your life and he's lifting the gifting he's bringing forth the gifting that's on you that he's called you forth from the beginning of creation that the seeds he's already planted in you are going to begin to come out and you will minister. You will minister in ways that you've never done before. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And we just pray that whatever this pain is got to go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, God, we speak the healing of the Lord. Go ahead, breathe. That her hands are going to do mighty works. I just, as soon as, as you came here, I just heard that you are a mighty vessel. A mighty vessel. Don't look to yourself, look to Him in you. You can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength. I think He has put the word in your mouth. And I heard that just as the song that we sang earlier, like it's like honey on your lips, the name of Jesus. You have power in that name. And I feel like he's going to bring you to a new level of power and authority in your ministry, reaching out a new boldness in Jesus' name. I pray a fresh boldness and anointing on Linda in Jesus' name. And I thank you that this pain, it can't stay. There's too much glory here. There's too much power and presence here. I command this pain to go and never return. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'll just thank you. Just thank you for it. <laughs> thank him. Glory to God. That's a pain here too. Lord, we pray for Sherry today. There is a, a spirit of oppression that the Lord is breaking over you today, Sherry. He's lifting it off your back. Every, every 
assignment from hell we break over you today in the name of Jesus. And we rebuke and command the spirit of infirmity to leave you now in Jesus' name. And we speak over this, this heart valve, Lord, to be healed. We ask for your healing now, Lord. We agree according to Matthew 18, 19. And we ask you, Father, to perform a restorative miracle in our heart right now. In Jesus' name, go inside right now, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, go ahead, Bree. Father, I thank you for sharing. I thank you. I just feel like he, re he really wants you to know that you're separated from your past. Things in past generations, we break every generational curse right now in Jesus' name and even anything hereditary that would try to plague your body, we command it to stop right now in Jesus' name. We plead the blood. We claim every, oh God, every good thing that was purchased with the blood of Jesus in her life, released now. Things that have been blocked, we open dams that have blocked the flow of your prosperity, the flow of your goodness in her life. We open them now in Jesus' name. Every door opened. Every dam opened and broken in her life. When we speak healing into her body, into these shoulders right now, we command the pain to go, to never come again. This pain cannot stay. Go, go. Jesus paid the full price by every every time he was whipped, every, every beating he took. He paid for this. It's done. We receive it now from heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sing that song about thanks with me. That's good. Soul is at rest, oh Lord. I give. Let's sing it one more time. done here today, Father, will be sustained, maintained, Father. Thank you, Lord. They'll maintain what they've obtained, Father. We believe it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, good to see all of you today. You can go ahead and be seated, and glory be to God. Well, we, we have a, uh, what we call a Take Back America campaign. We're going to go ahead and prepare our hearts to give. So, uh, ushers, if you want to pass out the uh, offering envelopes for us today. We appreciate that. And we want to encourage you that uh, some good things are happening. On November the 23rd, I understand they're going to file a lawsuit against the U.S. government over some of the things that t transpired in the 2020 elections. And uh, from what I understand, 74% of the counties in Georgia cannot provide an original ballot from 2020. Uh, then there were 23,000 ballots that had the same phone number on it. How about that? What's that tell you? <laughs> and I, you know, there's a lot of dead people voted too, so. <laughs> and 105% um, of the turnout, um, there was 105% turnout. In other words, there were more people that voted than were eligible to vote. So anyhow, this is what this lawsuit, the amicus brief or whatever they're going to do on the 23rd. So we want you to pray for November 23rd. Some good things are going to happen, we believe. And God's going to intervene in this situation. Well, let's prepare our hearts to give this morning. And I want to encourage you. The Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7, one translation says it this way. It says that your harvest depends on entirely on what you sow. The Bible says, Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. But this translation says that a man's harvest depends entirely on what he sows. 
So we want you to sow today to the kingdom of God. And the Bible says the whole kingdom of God is as if a man should cast seed into the ground. You cast that seed into the ground, it's going to grow, right? The seed knows what to do. The ground knows what to do. And that's all we got to do is, is plant it, right? So it's seed sowing time. Let's do that right now. And Brother Bob, would you come on up and let's pray. Glory be to God. Okay, brother. Father, we come into your house and gather in your name to worship you, Heavenly Father. Father, we come with a glad heart and open hand, Heavenly Father. And we thank you, Lord, that we sow bountifully and we will reap bountifully. So, Father, we give you all the glory and honor and the thanks. Receive our offering and our tithe. Receive it, Father. Of course, Father, we love you. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Everybody says amen. Now, some of you may still have some needs, but... Uh, Brother Scott's going to preach, and after that, he'll get, there'll be another time for you to come up and uh, be prayed over. All right, let's worship him. Age to age, he stands. Let's stand this morning. Age to age he stands. And time is in his hands. Beginning at the end. Beginning at the end. The Godhead three in one. More time, how great is our God? Is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? And I will see how great and how great is our God. He is great, isn't he? He's awesome. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Praise God. Good to see all of you this morning. We have a guest speaker this morning. And uh, by the way, did you hear the, about the little boy that was uh, standing on a corner in a, and a uh, preacher came up to him and he says, uh, you know, I'm new in town here. He says, where is the post office? And the little boy says, well, you get down the street and two blocks to the left and turn to the right, and there it is right there. He says, oh, okay, thank you very much. And so the preacher says, and by the way, why don't you come to church on Sunday, and we'll show you how to get to heaven. And the little boy says, no disrespect, but you don't even know how to get to the post office. How are you going to show me how to get to heaven? Okay, anyhow, we got a guy here with us today that can show you how to get to heaven. And uh, his name is Scott Callender. Scott went to... Geneva College with my son, my, one of my sons, and uh, played football for Geneva. He was a good football player. And uh, 
was on fire for Jesus way back in college. And by the way, that's his wife, Bree, right here. Wave at him, Bree. And uh, he's still on fire. We're going to stick this thing right in your pocket so the camera will follow you around. <laughs> so would you, uh, let's stand one more time and let's welcome this precious ministry gift that loves the Lord, filled with the Holy Ghost and anointed, Scott Callender. Thank you, Pastor. All right. Well, God bless you. All right. You may be seated. Thank you for the warm welcome. Well, it's great to be here every, uh, today and uh, just really uh, celebrate this opportunity. So uh, why don't we just, uh, you know, Pastor Cliff kind of started off with something funny here. Why don't we continue with that? <laughs> right? So um, one of my favorite things uh, are church bulletin bloopers. So maybe you've heard some of these. Thursday night. Potluck supper, prayer and medication to follow, low self-esteem uh, support group will meet Thursday at 7 to 8.30. Please use the back door. The Reverend Merriweather spoke briefly, much to the delight of the audience. A bean supper will be held Tuesday evening in the church hall. Music to follow. Please join us as we show our support for Amy and Alan, who is preparing for the girth of their first child. Ladies, don't forget the rummage sale. It is a good chance to get rid of those things not worth keeping around the house. Bring your husbands. Attend and you will hear an excellent speaker and heave a healthy lunch. <laughs> Please place your donation in the envelope along with the deceased person you want to be remembered. <laughs> the pastor would appreciate if the ladies of the congregation would lend him their electric girdles for the pancake breakfast next Sunday. Life groups meet on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. for food, fun, and fellow whipping. Ushers will eat latecomers. Hymn of response, crown him with many cows. I'll just do one more. The cost for attending the fasting and prayer conference includes meals. Hallelujah. Woo. It's good to laugh, isn't it? All right. All right. Well, we're going to just jump in the word. I'm just going to ask the Lord to just speak to me, to speak to us, and bring some fresh manna about Thanksgiving. We're in a, thanks, uh, a week where we celebrate Thanksgiving, and I just hope to shed some light on and bring some, that God would bring some revelation about how important it is to be thankful. So, Lord, we just pray for the anointing. We pray for the unction of the Holy Spirit. We ask that you would just, uh, Lord, bring forth what you want to say. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you, God, for your word setting us free. Amen. Amen. So we're going to do a little teaching, a little preaching. So we'll talk about... Um, you know, five different things about thankfulness, but uh, just just going to flow with the Holy Ghost here today. So let's jump right into it. So let's uh, jump into Psalm 50. So we'll go over some scriptures here, and I pray that this feeds your spirit. I pray that this will help us to just live in a spirit of thanksgiving. So Psalm 50, um, it says in verse 23, those who th sacrifice thank offerings honor me. And to the blameless, I will show my salvation. The New Living says, truly honor me. Sometimes it's, it's easy to wonder, Lord, how do I, 
what is one of the best ways I can honor you? And it's so simple. Right here in the Word of God, sacrificing thank offerings to the Lord. Let's jump over also uh, just along this point, right in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. So it says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So look at that. Look how sometimes the scripture is just so simple, but so profound. Many times we're, we're seeking out, Lord, what am I supposed to do? What's your will? Well, there it is right there. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. See, it doesn't say some, all. But you might say, how do I do the will of God? Well, giving thanks in all circumstances is one way to know we're doing and walking in the will of God, right? So, amen. And, and while we're seeking out the more, um, I'll call it the detailed plan and different things with praise God, he'll show that to us. He'll, he'll show us, he'll speak to us in our spirit. He'll speak to us in dreams. He'll speak to us in detailed ways. But until that leading comes, Praise God, there is so much instruction right here in the Word of God for to keep us busy for the rest of our life and to know we are in the will of God. Right? Amen. So giving thanks, one way we know we're in the will of God is just giving thanks to the Lord. All right? So um, I'm just going to jump to a few scriptures here. So Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. So this is when Jesus heals 10 men with leprosy. All right? Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. So these lepers... They were pretty desperate, right? They were very desperate. They came to the Lord, crying out to the Lord. They knew he had power. And he cried out, have, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back. Everybody say, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to them, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. So, if we take a look at this, I, our second thing I'll say about it is God expects us to be thankful. There's an expectation there. And when we are, he blesses us for it. He said, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. So there's something more to just receiving that healing that that one that came back and received. There was something that when he came back, another translation says, your faith has made you whole. So there was a completion when he came back to the Lord and said, thank you. Thank you. And he didn't come back like, thank you, Lord. It says he was loud. It's like, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know? Glory. See, God likes, he likes when we come out of our shell. He likes when we're loud before him and we're, we're, we're uh, free the Bible talks about when, when the ark was being brought in and David was dancing before the Lord in, in his royal underwear, right? Can you imagine? Just imagine the president coming in and just dancing in this, you know, one little garment there. But that's really what it was like. He just like, 
I don't know if it's underwear, but it was just something, not a lot covered, whatever it was, his wife was making fun of him. And just to show what God thought of that, unfortunately, she was barren after that. See, God loves when we are uninhibited before him. When we come with thanks and we come like that leper, thank you, Lord. He said, Jesus said, your faith has made you well. So it's not only just the receiving and the believing of something when we have faith and we receive from the Lord. Praise God for that. It's coming back and thanking him. It's not forgetting. He said, we're not all ten cleansed. Why don't only one come back? It's not forgetting. Okay? So let's turn to Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Let's flip to Philippians. This is a, a popular scripture. I'm sure many of you have heard it, but hopefully we can shed some light on this too. Um, do not be anxious about anything. Do you know God doesn't want you to be anxious about one thing? Let's think about that for one second. He doesn't want us to be anxious about anything. I'm guilty of that. I'm working on that. But praise God, he don't want us to have any, everybody say any, anxiety. None. That's God's will. So if you're not worried about something, you don't have to feel bad that you're not worried about it. Because some people will put that on you. Why aren't you worried about this? Like it's spiritual. It's not spiritual. It's contrary. Be anxious for nothing, the Word of God says. You could preach a whole sermon right on that. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What a beautiful scripture. What a beautiful scripture. One thing I want to point out here, though, it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. So praise, you can see there, praise and thanksgiving balance the scale in our prayer lives. There's a story of a missionary who uh, contracted smallpox. And this missionary prayed to the Lord about it. And the Lord gave the missionary a vision, a vision of one of those scales, those old-fashioned old -fashioned balance scales. And showed the missionary that his prayer was stacked up high on the scale. But the praise had a small stack. The Lord said to that missionary, when your praises equal your prayers, you will be healed. So she spent two days doing nothing but praising God. She had to catch up. At the end of those two days, she was completely healed. See, that's the power of praise and thanksgiving right there. So just to remember, you know, remember those scales. And see, the Bible says to ask. It's not wrong to ask. We can ask, but remember the scale. Bring the praise and thanksgiving. And quite frankly, if we just even asked him once and just for the rest on, just praised him and thanked him, he doesn't forget. He knows what we need before we ask him, the word says. Even the birds of the air, he takes care of. Can you think about that for a second? He sees little birds flying around. They're not worried about what the schedule is on Outlook. They're not checking their schedule. My eight to nine. Then I got to log in for this webinar. They're just flying around. Oh, there's some food here. Hallelujah. Chirp, chirp. There's food there. Oop, chirp, chirp. Happy as can be. 
I think I'll go to this yard. I think I'll go to that yard. I think I'll fly in the country. See, the Lord takes care of the birds, and he says, how much more valuable are you than birds? How much more valuable than you are you than birds? So let's remember the thanksgiving. I'll tell you, thanksgiving will set us free. Will set us free. Hallelujah. I'll tell you, in the book of Numbers, when they were, you know, they were grumbling and complaining. You know, the Bible says the Lord said snakes in there. You know, he wasn't happy with them. They, they, were, they were, you know, his, his patience was wearing thin and snakes came and, and different things, you know. Now, I'm not saying if you worry, God's going to send a snake in your toilet. But, you know, there was, this is, this is in Numbers 21. You could read about it, you know. But uh, that's when, you know, he said to, 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 to build the pole with snake on it. And obviously that represented Jesus and him healing us. Glory to God. But, you know, the, the, the Bible says, you know, to not grieve the Holy Spirit. So if it says not to grieve him, we can make him happy. Right? Now, believe me, he loves us. Nothing changes that love. Praise God. Nothing changes that close. But the moaning and complaining, God wants to, to shove that out. You know, be positive. It reminds me of that, that doctor that was real positive, real positive doctor. And he was, he was starting his, his early shift in, in, on, in the hallway where he was working. He heard this faint noise, and it was going, uh. and he was like, well, what is that? So he started walking walking down the hall to figure out what, where it was coming from. And he, it got louder. He said, oh. And he's like, oh, my God. And he came. He got right next to the room. It was coming out, and it got loud. Oh. And instead of worrying about, oh, my day is just shot, you know, he was real positive. He came in, looked the guy straight in the eyes and said, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so he chose to be positive. You know, that trip, thanks for laughing at that. The trip from the children of Israel should have only taken 11 days. Maybe some scholars put different numbers to that. Let's call it two weeks. Let's call it a month. It took 40 years. See, God was working something inside of them so they had the ability to go in the promised land. He was working something inside of them. But when the moaning and complaining came in, it wasn't something, it, it prevented them from receiving the blessing. It prevented, there was a blockage. He couldn't, he, he had to work in them what he intended to work in them. That was only be a couple week trip. 40 years later. 40 years later. Can you imagine that? So I'm going to share a secret here. Are you ready? Mooning and complaining doesn't change anything. There, I said it. So, I'm preaching to myself as well. Having a thankful spirit helps us, prepares us to receive that next phase he has for your life. Hallelujah. To help make that trip 11 days and not 40 years. Glory. All right. Fourth point. Thankfulness moves the heart of God. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 14. Starting in verse 14. So this is when the ark was being brought to the temple that Solomon built. Actually, I'll start in verse 13. The trumpeters and musicians joined in unison to give praise and thanks. Everybody say praise and thanks. Woo! Praise and thanks. To the Lord, accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, 
and other instruments. The singers raised their voices in praise to the Lord and sang, He is good. His love endures forever. Oh, wait, that's a real simple song. There's no bridge, the outro, and that's really simple. He is good. His love endures forever. And they sang it to the Lord. They sang. There was a simplicity to that. There was simple. They were rejoicing at what God has done. And, they, and then it says, then the temple of the Lord was filled with the cloud. That's the cloud of glory. The cloud of glory. And the priests could not perform their service because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the temple of God. Do you know when there is such a spirit of thanksgiving and praise that could come upon you, that the Lord will manifest his presence. He'll manifest his presence. See, he, yes, he's always with us, but there is a manifestation of the glory of God. And when you have that kind of spirit of thanksgiving, just like the word of God said, the cloud filled the temple. The cloud will fill your temple. The cloud will fill your home. The cloud will fill your business. The cloud will fill your future. As you send thankfulness into your future, the cloud will go ahead of you and prepare the way. Woo! Everybody say, woo! Yeah. The cloud of glory. The manifestation of the Lord. Satan runs from that. He runs. He can't stand to be in the presence of the Lord. That's why he wants you to get you down. The cloud of glory. Whew. Let's turn to Acts 16. 16 through 40. Acts chapter 16. So basically... The gist of this story, there was a, a girl with a spirit of divination that was following him around. And it was really getting on Paul's nerves. All right? So that is the, that is the uh, paraphrased rendition. Thank you. And she so got under his skin, he basically said, he commanded that spirit, he turned to her and said, get out in the name of Jesus. And that spirit came out of that fortune teller. And then when the people realized that were, you know, contracting that girl out, that they couldn't make money anymore, they were ticked. So they caused an uproar. And Paul and Silas were thrown in prison. So it says, verse 22, the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. Now think about this. Think about this in today's world. You know, I get upset when my fast food line's long. So these dudes were beaten, stripped and beaten with rods. After they'd been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received the orders, he put them in the inner cell. It wasn't just one of the cells. It was the inner cell. So probably like the whatever that would be in today's world, the solitary confinement or not a pleasant place. And fastened their feet in the stocks, all right? So they got these chains on them, right? In a very... You know, there's not cable in this prison. You know, there's no subscription to cable. This is a this is a old time prison in chains. It's probably wet, uncomfortable. I'm sure you can imagine what they were dealing with right there, right? So about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners we're listening to them. So they weren't like, how great is our God. They were like, how great, right? Yeah. They, were, they were belting it out for Jesus. 
They were belting it out. The other prisoners heard them, so they didn't care. They were like, okay, we're in chains. We're going to have some fun. We're going to glorify God. We're going to give thanks to him. We're going to praise him in the midst of this darkness. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, he's the God of the suddenly. Amen. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. See, when you're free, it helps free others. When you're free, it helps free others. Praise God. Whew. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he, threw, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. See, Paul and Silas didn't even, like, oh, this is our chance, let's run for it. They were like, well, this is where we're at. They, they looked at it as an opportunity to witness. They're like, oh, the Lord threw these chains off? Well, this, this is good. We're going to preach off this one. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights. So they were in the dark too, by the way. Rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. You see what happened there? See, what happens is the devil, it's like he expects us to react in a certain way. And you see, when you react in a way that the devil doesn't expect, when you go against the grain, when you walk on the narrow road, when Jesus said, wide is the gate, wide is the road that leads to destruction, but you're walking on the narrow road. When you don't react in a way that the devil would want you to, that is overcoming, church. That is a spirit of an overcomer. Paul and Silas refused to react the way their flesh wanted to. See, it's a choice. It's a simple choice. The Bible says, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life. It's a simple choice. I'm not saying it's easy. But when you make that choice, it pleases God. God will show up. Psalm 46. He's with you in the time of trouble. He's with you. An ever-present help in times of trouble. See, that, see, Revelation 2 and 3 talks about all these beautiful blessings that come upon the overcomer. And I'll tell you, one major way of overcoming is being thankful in the midst of a dark situation. And I'll tell you, it shows faith. It, is, it, will re, it reveals faith. It is a way to demonstrate faith. Whew, that's good. A thankful heart and attitude opens up our eyes to see life with a whole different set of lenses. How many of you wear, like, some prescription lenses? Anybody? If you took those off, it's a different world. Right? I, if I try to, to read without these readers, I'll just speak in tongues. So, when we have that spirit of thanksgiving, a thankful heart and attitude opens up our our eyes to see life with a whole different set of lenses and the, and the way God intends us to see it and gives us insight to see life situations from his perspective. See, that's what a thankful heart does. It enters you in to a whole new realm to a whole new perspective and where, the, where you know the God of the impossible, the Lord of the incredible will work on your, half, your behalf. You come into that spirit of faith and you're saying, thank you, Lord. I'm going to thank you for this. Jesus said, 
If you pray, Mark 11, 23 and 24, believe you receive it, and you shall have it. Say it. So with that spirit of thanksgiving, you believe, you receive, you, you know that God is going to work all things for the good of those who love him. So we have nothing to be anxious about. That is the overcomer. That's the overcoming thanks, thanks-filled heart. Glory to God. And when you believe, you receive, you know there's a joy. See, the first part of Proverbs 10, 28, the prospect of the righteous is joy. And the second part of that verse is uh, something like the expectations of the w- wicked come to nothing. So the prospect or the expectations, see, when we walk in that thankfulness, we know that we can expect good stuff. We can expect God. He, we, know, we know he'll perform his work. I expect to be blessed. I expect to be healed. I expect God to come through for me. I expect God to deliver me. I expect a miracle. I expect he's going to do everything he said he would. And that spirit of thankfulness brings us into that realm. Hallelujah. You see, God's so good. He's the creator. And that's why he talks about us uh, watching our words. Because when we speak, he's watching those words. He's, and he's watching for his word to perform it. See? Speak over your life. That spirit of thanksgiving will bring forth the word of the Lord that he's sown inside of you. That spirit of thanksgiving will bring forth the seeds of, of potential that he's put inside of you. That spirit of thanksgiving will, will give you that new set of lenses to see life from a whole different perspective and how good our God is. Amen. Amen. Let's give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you for the spirit of thanksgiving. Matt, can you come up, brother? We praise you for the spirit of thanksgiving, oh God. We praise you. We receive. Let's just, just between you and the Lord right now. Let's just ask his forgiveness where we've not walked in that. Lord, we ask your forgiveness where we've not walked in the spirit of thanksgiving. We ask your forgiveness, Lord. We confess it now. And we make the choice today. Hallelujah. And this week where we're celebrating thanksgiving, we're going to live a lifestyle of praise and thanksgiving. We make that choice despite our situation. God, you're a, you're a creative God. Hallelujah. And nothing is impossible. And you give us the ability to have it now, these blessings. Hallelujah. By faith and thanksgiving. And they, and they will walk out. They will walk themselves out. You'll perform your word. You'll bring the increase. So, God, we take on your joy. We take on thanksgiving. We take on the spirit of thanksgiving. We're going to make a choice to not worry. We're going to make a choice to pray with thanksgiving and not be anxious about anything. Lord, help us make it a lifestyle and to see life in the lenses that you have for us, God. Hallelujah. We're not going to let anybody else form our perspective but the Lord. In Jesus' name, no one else to form our perspective of life but Jesus. I'll tell you what, if there's anybody here that, that, that just hasn't had a chance or the Lord's been tugging at your heart maybe for years and you haven't had a chance to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. This joy is for you. He loves you. He died for you. He took our place so that we don't have to suffer hell, but we can live in heaven. So just if we could just uh, close our eyes a minute. If there's anybody here that you haven't ex- asked Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in your heart yet to be saved, or you feel you need to rededicate your life, just slip up your hand while our eyes are closed. Just slip up your hand. 
I won't embarrass you. We're just going to pray. But as a sign of faith, just slip up your hand. I was 15 years old when I walked down on the altar in front of a bunch of folks and had the opportunity to accept Jesus. And I'll tell you, I, I never regretted that decision. If you raised your hand or you maybe you should have raised your hand, just let's just pray this simple prayer together for Jesus to come into your heart. Lord Jesus, I come to you. I confess my sins and I ask your forgiveness. I ask that you come into my heart be my Lord and Savior. Save me, Lord. I purpose in my heart to follow you the rest of my life. And I ask for your grace to do so. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Let's just begin to minister to the Lord now. Let's just pray in the Holy Ghost. See what God wants to do here. If you have your prayer language, let's just pray in the Spirit a minute. Bree, could you come on up with me? Thank you for sowing this message in our heart today. Thank you for giving us the grace to live it now, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just, I, I believe God is giving a grace. This sounds like a very simple word, but a grace to follow him. A grace to, to follow Jesus where he's leading you. A grace to follow Jesus where he's leading you. Hallelujah. That grace is an empowering. See, grace empowers us. Empowers us. Just receive that grace this morning to follow the Lamb of God wherever He goes, where He leads you. Hallelujah. Where He leads you. That the Spirit of God will be clear in your heart. I'm just going to encourage you. Let's read, you know, take the time to read the Word and you know, pray in the Spirit. Take that time with Him. You know, let's not let the enemy steal that from us. And, you know, that's not a condemnation thing. It's just a, it's a relationship thing, you know. And as you feed on the, on the Word, as you feed on the presence of God, oh, life, life, life. The Bible says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Greek there is, be being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's a constant and filling. So let's ask God to fill us with the Holy Ghost today. Hallelujah. Lord, please fill us with the Holy Spirit. Oh, let the glory come right now, God. The glory of the Lord in this place right now. Right now. God is touching someone's leg or the, the femur or something right now. the healing power of God, the glory of God to help us write our course, Lord. Just receive the unction and the, the anointing is here right now. Hallelujah. Heal the back today, Lord. Grace for your back and the back pain goes in Jesus' name. The oil of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel like there's someone that is, um, Scott, as you said, even this isn't a message of condemnation, but I feel like there's someone here who's saying, you're expecting me to give thanks. Are you kidding? You know, you don't see where I'm at. You don't see what I'm going through, but God does see. And God's not asking you to give thanks for a bad circumstance. He's asking you to give thanks in that circumstance. So if there's anything in you where you're saying, Lord, I can't thank you right now. You know, I don't have the money for my next bill. My body hurts. Whatever it might be, God's got those things. You give those things to him. You surrender them to him, and you watch him move on your behalf. 
But giving thanks, like Scott said, that's going to open those doors to receive the things that you need. So don't give thanks for the, he's not saying to give thanks for your, your troubles, but in those troubles, because you know the end result. You know that you're coming from a place of victory. You know where you're going to spend eternity. Come on, can we give thanks for where we're going to spend eternity? Jesus died for us. He shed his blood for us. How thankful can we be every day for the breath in our lungs, for the promise of our future, for the promise of our eternity? So give him thanks now. If that's you where you were having trouble giving thanks, just give him thanks now. Start with a whisper and work to a shout. A shout of thanksgiving and a shout of praise in Jesus' name. Can we stand up together? Oh, we give you thanks, Lord. Let's just give him thanks in the spirit. Thanks with your heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for changing that situation. Thank you for saving our loved ones, Lord. Thank you, God, for protecting me. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do tomorrow and the next day. Thank you, Lord, for the new set of lenses for my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're faithful to your word. We thank you, Lord, that you will and you do answer prayer. And we have those things that we've asked of you, oh God. Glory to God. We thank you for taking us higher. We thank you for giving us sight. We thank you for giving us dreams. We thank you for giving us visions. We thank you for forming in us, hallelujah, to be more like Jesus. We thank you for boldness. We thank you, God. We thank you for all your blessing. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, Jesus. We pour out our hearts to the Lord right now. We thank you, God. Thank you. Oh, we give you thanks, Lord. Oh, we give you thanks, Lord. Let's just begin to sing to the Lord. We begin to sing to the Lord. We begin to sing to the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We give you a wave offering, oh God. Oh, we thank you, God. You are so good. You are so good, oh God. Oh, you are so good. Hallelujah, Lord, we thank you. Oh, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Doesn't that feel good? Doesn't that feel good? Hallelujah. Oh, praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, my heart is full. Aren't you glad for that word today? Come on, let's thank God for that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Scott and Bree. Thank you, Father. Anybody else have a need in their lives? Scott and Bree, just stand up here if you would, please. And and if, we, if you have a need, you'd like to pray for, for that this morning, you come on up. Otherwise, Father, we thank you for this day. We glorify you and give you thanks from our hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing as we go. Thanks. You have poured out your healing upon us. You have set the captives free and my heart. We know it's not what we've done, but by your hand alone, and I will arise and give thanks to you, Lord my God, and your name I will bless with my whole heart. You have shown mercy. You have shown mercy to me, and I give thanks to you, Lord. We give you thanks today, God. You, O oh Lord, are the healer of my soul. You, O oh Lord, are the gracious redeemer. You come 
to restore us again. Bye. You have shown mercy. You have shown. You have shown mercy. You have shown mercy. You have yes. You have shown mercy. You have shown mercy to us. And I give thanks to you, Lord. We give you thanks. shown mercy you have shown you have yeah you have shown mercy you have you have shown you have shown mercy you have shown mercy to us I give thanks to you Lord shown me favor unending. You have given your life for me, and my heart knows of your goodness. Your blood has covered me. Have shown me favor unending. You have given your life for me, and my heart knows of your goodness. It's in me, and I will arise, and I will arise, and give thanks to you, Lord, my God. Your name we will bless with my whole heart. You have shown mercy, you have shown mercy to me. And I give thanks to you, Lord. We give you thanks, we give you thanks to you. God for all you've done. 